All right, all right. Welcome, welcome on in. No worries. Okay. Thought I could change a setting, but apparently since I'm already going, I can't change the setting. So I think we're just going to be good for today. Okay. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to High Performance at High Noon. Happy New Year. Yes. Um, let's close this. I'm excited to be here with you. I am Jace Johnson, a work-life integration strategist. And I wanna thank you for joining today's call. This call is for high-performance professionals and it is every Wednesday at noon Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I don't know how that looks. I feel like I'm up in the screen, but I'm back in my office. So uh, I have been in my dining at my dining room table for a minute. Um, and so I'm back down here in my office. And if you had joined me last week, I was complaining because I have a fluorescent light in here. And so I just got my fluorescent light changed out. So there's no more humming. I don't know if anyone could hear my the humming, but I had left my office because it was this loud hum. Um, from the fluorescent light that was um, placed in here. So that had to go and it is gone. So I'm um, super excited to have you on today's call. Um, before I get started, I want to let you know about Miami in case anyone needs a reason to go to Miami, come to the Mimosas and Manifestations brunch. I am finalizing, finalizing the details on our location. So all of that will drop, but we will be in Miami having a fabulous time um, talking about manifestation, talking about how we reach our goals, really digging into, um, you know, the crux of what it takes in order for you to live the life that you really want to live. Um, I have a fabulous guest who will be um, with me down there in Miami. I am waiting on a couple of things from her so that I can really highlight her and promote her. Um, and I'm super excited about that. And that is in February. So the weather in Miami and Denver, Eh, the weather in Miami, uh, the weather, I'm sorry, the weather in Denver, eh, but the weather in Miami, fabulous around this time. And so I'm really looking forward to that. So that'll be February 18th. Um, and of course, the link is on my website, jazzjohnson.com. So um, today we're going to talk about leveraging your lifestyle. And I, I'm um, I'm excited to talk about this topic because all of the points I'm going to make today like have direct ties to my own life and some of them I'm still struggling with and I want to talk about things at times that I still struggle with because I think sometimes we feel like we see someone and they have all this stuff together and it's like that's not necessarily accurate that's not necessarily the truth right like there are just things that we struggle with that may continue to be struggles for a while or that we continue to grow and perfect so all of the things that i'm going to all the tips that i'm going to give you today are things that i have come a long way in but some of them i still really struggle to uh work out and uh, but i think it's important as we think about how do we live a life that we really love how do we get to the place where um, we are able to do the things that we want to do in the times that we want to do them, still maintain a high performance, still maintain the impact that we want to make. How do we do those things, right? Um, and a good part of that is by leveraging the lifestyle that you want to live. And so our time is so important. And I think like we technically know that our time is important, right? I don't think anyone has to tell someone who is, you know, out there crushing it that our time is important. Um, it's a thing that we can't get back. But oftentimes, so many of us actually use it really freely and really recklessly. So we don't value our time. And then we struggle to understand why others don't value our time. So I don't know if you have ever been a person who has been frustrated by the fact that somebody has not actually honored your time, that someone has not, you know, valued your time. And this, like, this used to happen to me really early on in the space where I was like uh, early coaching. So when I first launched the Black Business Initiative, I was meeting with every business owner that ever wanted to meet with me. You want to meet with me? I want to meet with you. And we would go at it. And what was happening during that time 
was I would meet with someone and we would talk for an hour and 90 minutes. Like I had no way to like structure my time to make sure that I was in, that I was out, that I was efficient. And we would get in there and I'd be talking to them and I'd be trying to coach them and I'd be trying to motivate them and try to empower them. And they'd be telling me all the reasons why they can't, they won't, they ain't. And an hour and 90 minutes would go by, you know, and we've made no progress, right? And then I would come away frustrated and say, they didn't honor my time, right? And the, the reality was, it wasn't up to them to honor my time, it's up to me to honor my time. And so when we learn about like things like boundaries and, and, and um, ways that we set parameters around ourselves in order for us to maintain that high level of performance, it's not so much if you honor my time, it's if I honor my time, right? And so is it that I start on time? Is it that I end on time? Is it that I keep uh, you know, our meeting on track? Is it that I stay on task with my goals and not allow for myself to be distracted, um, even in the face of someone who wants to you know, potentially use up or monopolize some of my time? So that has been one of the things that I've noticed a lot in this space is that we often use our time so recklessly. And so while we know we can't get our time back, and while in the space of business, we often talk about time in the sense of money, time is also experience. And time is also rest, like time equals money, experience, rest, right? So we need to be able to enjoy or get a fair exchange for our time. We need to be able to experience the time that we have and make that enjoyable as often as possible. We know life's lives, but how do we make that in experience enjoyable? And then also, how do we make sure that we are getting the proper amounts of rest that we need for us to be productive, for us to stay at the top of our high performance game, for us to continue to, you know, maximize our, our um, the impact that we put out, right? And for us to maximize our creativity. So those things are important and our time allows us to do that. It allows us to have a fair exchange. It allows us to experience the things that we want to experience in life and it allows us to get the rest that, that creates that space for us. And so I really want to you know, think about at the top of the year, how do we make changes and shifts to our time so that we can have the type of lifestyle that we want to live, but also so that we get away from using our time so recklessly. We get a lot of warnings about that. We know people have passed away and then they come back and they are not passed away. They haven't come back and told us what they what happened when they passed away. But people who have, you know, gotten older in life and have said about things that they regret in particular around the time, what they did or didn't get to, where they were preoccupied. And those are the things that we don't get back, right? And so as we move into a new space, we move into a new year, everyone has goals and targets and things that they're shooting for. How do we see our time in 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 reality or relation to that rather, because it's one of our most precious, precious assets. And so one of my favorite quotes by Denzel Washington is don't uh, confuse movement with progress, right? Don't confuse movement with progress. So just because you're doing a lot doesn't mean you're getting a lot done. And I think that is also something that I have learned frustrates people in the space of high performance. Like we know that we have good ideas. We know that we're doing a lot. We know that we're busy, but are we in fact having the type of impact that we want to have? And is it creating the type of progress that we wanted to create? So keep that one in the back of your mind. Don't confuse movement with progress, right? And so work-life integration and the concepts around work-life integration require you to have a good grasp on time. So I'll talk about a couple of things. One, th that are misconceptions around time and in relation to like time and high performance, right? So time and high performance, what do I need to do with my time as a high performance professional? And how might I have confused some things that we think about time with what the reality is. And so one that I know has really affected me is working as fast as possible. So I get up in the day, right? And I, and I know many of us experience this, especially if you are doing multiple things, you've made multiple commitments, you get up and you're just pounding the pavement. You go, 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 go all the time, working as fast as you can. And you're rushing through a lot of your work. Not to say it's not quality, not to say it's not done well. It's none of that. It's what's happening to you as the individual who is in a constant state of hurry and rush, hurry and rush, hurry and rush. And what often happens is it causes a lot of anxiety. And so one of the things that is prevalent in high performance professionals, high achievers, is stress and anxiety. And the constant fast pace that we move, that we push ourselves to move in causes or creates that reality of being rushed and it creates um, the anxiety. So one of the things that I've learned is um, 
yes, we definitely have to work on, we, it's just something we have to work on, right? So that's why I'm acknowledging these things because today I'm not talking about something I mastered. Today I'm talking about things that I too also struggle with. So I hear you and I feel you on that. So when we work as fast as possible, when we're rushing, it causes that space of anxiety. And oftentimes what happens is, is that when we put our schedules together, so there are some like basic time management techniques that we know, right? Time management, self-management. I personally like self-management because we all know we can't actually manage time, right? It just keeps on going. And then we manage ourselves in that time. So we know that there are some techniques like time blocking. So you block out all the different things. I personally believe in time blocking. If I pulled up my calendar today, it is literally blocked out in chunks of time to do certain tasks and certain things. What we can never account for, what we don't account for is life, is the unexpected. And so we put our time together in this way. And typically speaking, life does happen. Something happens that we weren't expecting for that day. You get an emergency email, you have a phone call. Um, you know, for me, one of the tasks that came up today is I have to go and get a power of attorney signed. I have to have it signed immediately. I need to get that done today. And it was not on my list. It wasn't an expected thing. I thought we had everything taken care of. Um, and something that my daughter is in need of, they can't get it done without this power of attorney. Not just any power of attorney, this specific power of attorney that they sent to me. So now in order for my daughter to be able to continue to move things forward, I, as her legal guardian, have to go and get a power of attorney done. Wasn't expecting to have to do that today, right? And so life just happens and things just pop up. And so what happens to all the time blocks that I put in place, what has to move around, what has to shift? Or am I now trying to power through more work faster creating that space where I'm now rushing, where now I have anxiety, right? And so oftentimes, because we think of ourselves in this way or because we operate in this way, we stay at that high level of stress. So um, in, in my tip in this space is actually just debunking that myth. Like most of the time, we don't actually get through all the work that we need to get through in a day and it causes us a lot of stress. And I'm gonna talk about some things that we can do um, a little bit further down the line. But how do we just debunk that we actually have to rush? And how do we plan less on our day, plan less in our day in order for us to account for the fact that there is likely going to be something that takes up between 30 minutes to two hours of our time unplanned, unscheduled, and maybe just takes up our whole day. Um, and so how do we at least mentally prepare for that and then also prepare that time in our in our calendar where there are gaps, where we haven't filled in all the time so that we can walk through the time that we need? Or how do we create more time if I think it's going to take me 30 minutes? Do I plan an hour? Do I plan an hour and a half, right? And it's not that you don't want to have focused time, but how good does it feel to actually get through a day, check off everything and have time at the end that you weren't expecting? So like best case scenario, you get some time back, right? Worst case scenario, you planned at least both mentally and in your physical time to create for life because it just happens. And yet we continue to just breeze right through it like it doesn't. So the second thing I want to talk about is always doing something, right? We're high performance. We're high achievers. <laughs> but I'm off exactly being optimistic in that space. So. We always feel like we have to be doing something. One of the commitments that I made to myself, I actually made it last year. And then so far in all 11 days of the new year, I have held strong to not working while I'm eating. Let me sit down and just enjoy my meal. I can enjoy a 10 minute meal. I can enjoy a 30 minute meal. I don't have to be doing all the things, but <laughs> right as you eat, right? This is a lunchtime call, so I get it. But like, how do I actually just take the 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes to sit down and enjoy my meal without actually feeling like I have to be working or have to be doing something, right? And I have struggled with having feelings of guilt over that. Like I have this long ass list of shit I need to do and I feel like I need to be doing it right now. And now I'm going to stop and I'm going to do nothing. And in the back of my mind, it's all the things that are still playing around. This also adds on to the stress and it adds on to the anxiety. So a couple of um, weeks ago, I talked about deciding, like making decisions. And unfortunately, out of all of the high noon calls that I've done so far, that is the only one that for some reason did not record to my computer. So I will have to talk again about decision making. And I think that'll just be something that continues to come up. But one of the things that can happen inside of the space, in particular about the feelings of guilt when we're not doing something and we know there's a long list of things to do, is just to make a decision. 
because it allows your brain to rest. So now instead of me thinking, well, should I be doing this or should I be doing that? Can I take a break? I don't know if I can really afford to take a break. I mean, I'm going to sit here and scroll through social media, but I'm not going to feel good about myself when I do, right? How do you just stop and make a decision? And I'm going to take 15 minutes to do nothing. And because I've made that decision to do that, my brain can actually just rest on all the things I'm not doing. What often happens is, is that some of that stress and anxiety is caused because we have not actually made a decision. So we are resting, but we haven't decided that we're resting. So our brain is actually telling us to move and our body is not moving. Now something is misaligned, right? So how do we just make the decision that I'm not doing anything and then allow my brain to just live in that space? I'm not doing anything and that's my decision. So do that in small doses if you haven't done that before, but like make the decision so that your brain and your body are not misaligned, that your that what the activity of doing nothing and the thought that you need to be doing something are not clashing into each other. And reminding ourselves that creativity, which is one of the things that really help us stay at the peak of our game, that creativity is actually it, it flows in both times of movement and it also flows in times of stillness. And so if we're always moving, we're only getting one side of the creativity spectrum, the creativity that flows from movement. But there's a whole nother spectrum of creativity that flows in stillness, right? And so I had to do this over the weekend. I was so, I was running, running, running. And I said, I'm exhausted and I'm going to just take a break. So now let me segue over to a decision that I've been working on that I had not come to clarity on. So I have a product line that I'm going to launch. I'm very excited to talk about it later, not today but I'm going to talk about later, but I have a product line that I'm going to launch. And I had a name for this product line initially when I had a partner for the product line. And since the partner and I decided not to do the, 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 uh, the line together, I decided out of integrity that it would not be okay for me to use that name. So I kept thinking about what was a new name that really, really resonated with me that I would be able to move this product line forward, like for myself. Right? So I have been thinking about this for at least three or ish or so months. Like it's been prevalent in my mind that I haven't landed on a name that just, bam, it resonated with me. So now this past weekend, I'm crazy busy. I'm doing all these things and I decide I'm going to take a nap. I had to make the decision because I laid down and then I got back up and I was like, no, you have more stuff to do. And I was like, nope, you're going to make the decision. You're going to take a nap. I took a nap. Do you know in my dream, I dreamt up the name? I dreamt up the name in my dream. I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I got it. And I went straight to GoDaddy to look up the domain name. Not taken, y'all. I got my domain name. I got my name for my product line in my sleep. Like in my dream, it came to me, right? So it's just a reminder that our creativity works on two spectrums. And oftentimes we are always pushing the spectrum of movement but how much the spectrum of rest or stillness can really allow us to get into another avenue of our creativity that we don't often tap into because our high performance, high achievement, achievement mindset and environment don't allow for us to be in stillness comfortably. So how do we get into the space of stillness comfortably so that we can also tap into the other side of the spectrum, which really goes back to enhancing our performance, right? So all of these things together, we can't just be one-sided. These things work holistically in order for us to be at our best selves. So um, the third thing I want to talk about is put a period on it. So normal, you know, self-management, time management guidelines will tell you pick three to five, five being at the top end, things that are high level priorities that you are going to accomplish for that day or accomplish for that week, sometimes even accomplish for the month, sometimes even accomplish for the quarter. Like let's say if you uh, subscribe to Traction or the EOS system, right? You have your quarterly rocks. Your quarterly rocks are the top three to five things that your company is gonna focus in on for the whole quarter. So what are you driving towards and what movement are you using every day in order to get to those things? And it's the same thing in the day. So just like I said, you could go, you could be putting too much on your plate. So now when life, life's right, then all of a sudden, now you're not doing what it is that you wanted to be doing. Now you feel frustrated. Now you feel like you just got to keep going. How do you pick three to five things that you want to put on your calendar? So if you subscribe to that method, what you probably find is that you start with three things, maybe four, 
maybe five. I see you laughing right now, Cynthia, because you already know by the end of the day, you got seven, you got 10, you got 12, you got 15. Now you frustrated because you can't check off all them things on that list. And what started off as such a promising day, you just keep adding to it and, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. Oh yeah. And I need to make sure I do that. Now you ain't finished your day. Now you feel like you haven't actually been productive in the day and you haven't blocked out your time and, 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 right? So another stressor, another stressor. What happens if we put a period on it and we learn to use our no and say, actually, my plate is full for today and I won't be able to make that happen? Because the reality is you can start adding all the things on your list anyway, and you're still, you're still not going to make it happen. So do you rest in that space because you made a decision? This is not going to happen today. And now you can walk in that and you can make a decision about what to do. Do I need to move that to another day? Do I need to, do, what do I need to do, Right to make this thing maybe that needs to happen today happen? Does it need to happen today for real? Is this a, you know, a fake pressure that I put on myself? Is this a pressure that somebody else put on me that I didn't ask for? Because that's a thing, right? How do I get to the place where I can just put a period on it? Actually, until I get these three, four, or five things done, there is nothing else that I can add to this day say the occasional emergency, and is it a true emergency that pops up that we just talked about when life lifes? So how do we put a period on it? So I'm laughing at myself again, because again, these are not areas that I have perfected, but they are areas that I am now very acutely tuned into, because on Friday, this was my day. I had three things on Friday I was supposed to do. By the end of Friday, my list had 23 things on it, and I only accomplished seven. And I was like, now I feel <laughs> so mad. Like, this is not going to work for me, right? So how do I make sure that I put a period on it and say I can't? So I go out and I say, how do we make our yes, our yes, and our no, our no? It's the other, and it's, it's also utilizing that full spectrum. It's not just about what you say no to. It's also about what you say yes to. And so in this space, I need to say yes to the three to five things I decided to do, no to the rest of the bullshit that came up. And like, how do I make sure that I'm intentional in that space? Because what difference does it make anyway, if it all isn't going to get done? How do I like... <laughs> It's not all going to get done. So I'm saying yes. And then now I'm out of integrity because I can't even fulfill the promise that I made to when I said the yes, right? And so for me, integrity is my highest value. Now, I used to subscribe to the Army standard of um, integrity because I'm, I'm ex-military. So that was doing the right thing, even when no one is looking. And that's one side of integrity. Do you know the other side of integrity is doing what you say you're going to do? So if I told you I was going to get it done and now I can't, and it's not even possible to get done in the day, I am out of integrity. What does that cause? Stress, stress and anxiety, because now I told you I was going to get something done and I actually can't get it done. It's not even physically possible. So I've added another layer of stress and anxiety to my plate that I could have saved and avoided had I set my boundaries and just said, no, I actually don't have the room to do that today. Sometimes you can just bounce that back to the person whose problem it is. I wish I could help you. I can't. You're going to have to figure out what you got to do to make that happen. But I'm not able to because now I'm acting out of integrity, out of alignment with my value system to actually do what I said I was going to do. So I want to just transition now before I open up for some Q&A and some feedback on um, a book that I highly recommend called Who Not How. And this is around how to leverage, right? Who, not how. So I'm just going to give you a couple of quick tips about it, like very bullet pointed, because we could get into a whole nother session on the concepts of the who, not how. But here's what you need to think about. When you, as a high performance professional, oftentimes as either your own boss, you're the CEO of your company, or you're a high performance professional, high level professional inside of another company, you are often tasked with getting many things done that will not happen inside of your day. Plus, you might be a parent. Plus, you might have other businesses. Plus, you might be a community member. Plus, 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 you might actually want to take some care for yourself. Like maybe I just want to live a little bit of my life, right? So you have all the things that com that comprise who you are and the amount, the finite amount of time that you have in a day. It's not necessarily that you can't get it done. It's who's going to be responsible for getting it done. And that might not be you. So at a high level, some of the things that you can be thinking about in terms of the who is you can buy someone else's time. You can hire someone 
right? Contract, employee, whatever that looks like. And there are so many ways to do that, right? One time, uh, a one-time job. I know, you know, I have a garage to clean out. I'm not going to clean, I'm not going to clean out that garage. It's not going to happen. I was, so I hired someone. I went on TaskRabbit and hired someone who's going to come by. They're going to assess the job. They're going to give me a plan. They're going to come by and clean out the garage. I mean, I'm just not going to do it. I could lie and say that I am, but I wouldn't, right? I'd be acting out of integrity. So like you can buy someone's time to leverage a thing that needs to get done that you're not going to do. You can also delegate to others with accountability, right? Because you're the head honcho, it stops you too. The buck stops with you. So in, in, in the sense of uh, extreme accountability, also a book I recommend, in the sense of extreme accountability, you've got to make sure that when you delegate a task, right? Whether it's as simple as delegating a task to the kids, delegating a task to a spouse or a partner, delegating a task to an employee, delegating a task to another family member, someone in your circle, a volunteer, Right? but making sure that you're accountable to making sure that it got done, but that you don't actually take the task back and do it yourself. Also automation. So how do you automate tasks that happen regularly that you can get to do on your own? One for me has been bill paying. I hate bill paying. So I've now automated all my bills. And then I have one bill that I need to look at before it automates. And that's the credit card bill. <laughs> Can I actually pay this credit card bill? Okay, boom, I'm good. And it automates, right? But like, there are other things that we don't like to do or that take up our time that we can learn how to automate and make sure that they're still happening, but it doesn't take up our time. And then the other one is trading off. Like, how can you trade off with someone? So maybe a regular task or a consistent task doesn't always have to be done by you. Like, this is my week to do it. And next week is your week to do it. This is my month for this, but next month is your month for this. So you can begin to leverage some of your time that way, that way by creating trade-offs. So these are some of the things that I recommend in terms of how do you get things done, but not always if you're the one that's doing it. And you can begin to leverage these tools in order to create the lifestyle that you want to free yourself up, to reduce that stress, reduce that anxiety, but still maintain that high level of performance and professionalism that has made you you, right? It has gotten you where you are. All right. So I have just given you all that I got for today. <laughs> Tell me what questions do we have? What feedback do we have? Hi, um, this is Cynthia Campbell. I just want to, I was laughing the whole time because everything you said, that's me in the middle of everything's going on. Um, my main thing right now, because of my spouse health issues, I, I had to learn how to delegate, but a lot of times I'm trying to delegate, but then I take it back because I'm like, oh, you're not doing the way I want. So that's an area that um, I'm finding out to be difficult. So um, others might have something um, similar to that. So how would you address that with, with us as a group? <laughs> so um, so I'm in the mil I was in the military, right? So I have a way that I do, like it, the military teaches you certain precise things. Like it needs to be done like this, right? So when I got my first apartment um, and I had my boyfriend at the time move in, I fold my towels a certain way. He folds his towels another way. And I was going back and I was unfolding the towels and refolding them my way. A couple of things happened. One, I was wasting my time. Two, he felt unappreciated because he was trying to do something, right? That I was undoing all of that work. But what also was happening was it really actually didn't make a difference other than to my sensibilities. Like, at the end of the day, the towels were folded, they were put away, they were neat, right? But they didn't look like how I wanted them to look. So at the time we were engaged, we were gonna get married. This is my daughter's father. We never got married and I dodged a bullet on that one. But I will say this, when we were going to get some counseling, um, this was something that was brought up. And what was told to me was let him fold the towels, right? Like allow him to fold the towels. And I had to really assess what was my issue in that space with something being done the way I wanted it to be done versus it actually getting done. And when we're starting off with something, it's easy to like really want it to be done our way. And there's, a, there's an aspect to making sure you're holding on to standards and quality, right? Those things matter, standards and quality, but 
the method to getting to the standard or the quality does not necessarily have to be done by you because as you grow, like what you do as a single member LLC is not what you can do when you have an organization that has scaled to 10, 15, 20, 30 people. You just can't do it, right? So you can create the standard. You can even create the way that you want to train somebody to do it. Then you have to let that go. But you also have to ask yourself, what's most important in this space? Is it the outcome or the method to get to the outcome? So as long as the outcome trumps the method to get to the outcome, then as the leader of that situation, you've got to let the method go. And you've got to give people the autonomy to be able to, to do their work, right? Because you can't stay over and micromanage someone. So really, some of that is literally just a mindset shift that you have to make about what's most important. Because now if I'm stressed and I'm experiencing anxiety and I'm rushed and I'm not getting things done, but I'm not getting things done because I took back a task that was completed, but wasn't completed the way I would complete it, I've got to look inward. And I've got to make that shift. Does that make sense? So that might be a reminder that you got to give yourself. Yes, yes. That's one of the biggest challenges of scale of going from I to we or I to team is how do I take my ability and how do I how do I reflect that on someone else or do I adopt that out, outcome based mentality of did the job get done? <laughs> it wasn't in a in a timely manner. Okay, I need to be okay with that. <laughs> um, exactly. I struggle with that on the on the regular. <laughs> and it is a struggle. And I think too, like we do have to assess like as or like when we're building organizations, we have to think about process versus outcome and really make that distinction. Sometimes the process does matter. If you want to duplicate a process over and over, right? Then you create the process or you, and you teach it and you have that manual set up so someone can do it over and over. But that uh, ability to allow, especially for smaller teams to have that, that autonomy to grow, right? Or just smaller tasks. Like I might put away the dishes one way and my kid puts them away another way. It doesn't matter. But in my business, if there's a certain task that needs to be done in a certain order, I need to be able to justify why the process matters more than the outcome. And if I can't justify that, hands off. Who else? Y'all are easy today. All right. Well, if we don't have anything else, I will tell you before I let you go and continue on about your day today, um, I will tell you about my excuse me while I live intentionally. Oh, you're outside. I got you. I will tell you a little bit about my excuse me while I live intentionally program. So my program is up and running. I have an eight week course called excuse me while I live intentionally. And this program is designed for high performance professionals to really get to a place where they are living the life that they love while they are maintaining their levels of high performance, right? So some of that we talked about today. Um, I'm about to read that question in just one second. Um, some of that we talked about today, but really what we're talking about are work life integration strategies that actually help you live a life that you love. One of the things that prompted me to do this is one, understanding the high levels of stress that we all experience in the space of high performance professionals. Um, and also understanding that a lot of people were saying, I'm going to one day, right? Like I'm going to get here one day. Well, how do we make that day today? Because life is fleeting, right? And we're able to create amazing impact and we're able to create um, amazing lives for ourselves. And we can do that together at the same time. So if that is something that you're interested in learning more about, I encourage you to get in touch with me and I'd be happy to set up an appointment and talk to you more about where you are in your life, where you are trying to get to and see if this program is a good fit for you. Um, and so you can go ahead and make sure that you email me um, or go to jaisjohnson.com. So the question that Jade asked is, my thing is waking up early. What time do you start your day? So so let me give you the real, real, the real, real on that for me. So I actually just changed my wake up time. I was getting up roughly about 4.30, but what was happening was is that I wasn't accomplishing all the things I wanted to accomplish in a day, hence me putting a lot of these pieces in place. And what was, what was also happening was I was going to bed really late. So I actually wasn't getting the rest that I needed. So um, there's a guy named Tom Beliu who I follow religiously, who actually talks about not even using an alarm clock. 
Now, that might not work for everyone to not use an alarm clock, depending on what your schedule looks like. But part of that is how early do you need to go to sleep in order to get the full amount of rest and allow your body to naturally wake up, which if you're behind on sleep may change, right? It might be longer hours. And then as you start to actually get your rest caught up, will probably be, it will start to fall into a regular amount of time for sleep. Now, for me, for example, I have children. So no matter what, I need to be up at a certain time to make sure I get them to school on time. But I like to get six to six and a half hours of sleep. If I get less than six and a half, if I get less than six hours of sleep in two to three consecutive days, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not, this is not work. It just won't happen. So, um, so I actually backtrack my time. So I kind of have a, a hard cutoff. Like I have to go to bed by midnight because otherwise I won't get up in time to like get my kids where they need to be, which is 6 a.m. I need to get up at 6 a.m. to get my kids where they need to be. That's like my hard, hardcore time. But really, I like to go to bed closer to 10 so I can get up around five and have longer than six hours to sleep. And I still have time to get up and have a full morning routine unrushed morning routine before I get my kids up. And so I also create contingencies, right? So like my full morning routine is for me to actually get up. I spend time in prayer, meditation, and gratitude. That's like, that's my morning, my morning time. That time usually takes me unrushed about 30 minutes. Then I like to be fully dressed before I get my kids up so that I'm able to kind of move around and I'm not trying to ready myself while I'm getting them ready. On a day that I go to bed late and I have to get up closer to the time that it's time for me to wake them up, my contingency is that I always do my gratitudes. So my gratitudes take me the shortest amount of time in order to make sure that I have stayed in the habit of taking a moment for myself and being grateful because I really do value the space of finding like goodness all around me, especially when I'm going through a hard time. So if I have to get up if I went to bed late, it's probably a hard day. So I need to start that day with gratitude. But that's my contingency. Like if I don't have 30 minutes, I have three minutes to take a moment and actually do my gratitude. And then I can move on with the day and kind of go that route. So that contingency space, like what happens if I don't hit my target the way I want to? What's the lowest that I can go to? Well, the lowest I can go to is I still got to get up at six. And the lowest I can go to is I still need to take three minutes to be grateful in my life before I can move on. And I can take that time in place of my typical 5 a.m. wake up time with my half an hour of like morning routine time. So I hope that makes sense that, you know, how do you plan for life happening? Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Good. How do I, what, ask me a question again, hack time to, do you turn, oh, is that what time do I turn my computer off? Okay, what time do I turn my computer off? That's a good question. So again, on the ideal time, I turn my, my computer off ideally um, at like eight. But if you've ever gotten a late night email from me, you might notice that I've been up later. <laughs> but sometimes that is because like, and so, the, you know, this is like, these are different things. So like, I have a challenge, which I have not met, but I have a challenge to like send out an email every night. That's an actual challenge from my coaching group, right? I'm in a coaching program myself. So my coaching group challenges me to send out an email every night. Sometimes I will be like ready to go to bed and be like, dang, you didn't get your email out, right? So I come and I sit down and I put out an email. And then sometimes I still don't do that. So like, that's one of the things that I'm working on. But if I like some, a lot of times if I'm coming back and you got that late email from me, it's not because I've worked all the way up through that time. It's actually because as I started winding down my night, I'm like, oh, dang, I didn't do my email. So I'll come back and done my email. But my ideal time, like my kids go to bed at 830. So I try to shut down everything so I can actually be present for their evening routine for them. Then once they're in bed, I like to try and wind my own brain down. And I, and I think I mentioned this before. I don't know if I mentioned this here or in my um, program, but it helps to know when you have your own set of issues. Like I have racing thoughts. That is a diagnosable situation. So mentally speaking, I have racing thoughts. When I don't allow my brain to come down, 
I'm not going to say I have problems going to sleep because I will pass out, but my brain is often active when I'm asleep. Like I, I have a restless sleep if I don't allow myself time to actually like wind it down. So I do try to be intentional about giving myself mindless time before I go to sleep. And I'll just say like my mindless time is like one of the things I do is adult coloring. So I don't know for people who do that. I don't actually have a coloring book. I will show y'all. I actually have a, um, an app called, um, somebody asked me about this app too called Happy Color. So this app, I have a, um, I have a, a whole adult, I don't know if y'all can see that, um, app that I do that allows me to do like coloring that I will just sit and be mindless, right? Um, I have certain podcasts that are more soothing that I listen to and not like mindset, high performance, time management, uh, business building, finance. Like I can't listen to all that at night because my brain is active, right? So I actually bring it down and listen to things that are a little bit more soothing and a little bit more calming um, for myself at night or stories, things like that at night than I do like podcasts that are like into it, right? Um, so, you know, thinking about how your brain operates to bring yourself down so you can have restful sleep and then start your day. And so I'm not at the space where I don't need an alarm clock yet, but I do know that if I don't have an alarm clock, I almost always wake up at seven. So I have to still like right shift my own sleeping habits to get me to the place where I can naturally wake up at five. So I probably need to start going to bed closer to like nine really is the reality of it. But my hard cut off is midnight. I try to make sure I'm in bed by midnight. What other questions y'all got? Was this helpful? I hope this was helpful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So if you found it helpful, I'm gonna ask that you guys share it out. Um, don't forget to let me know if you're interested in learning more about the Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program. You can um, hit me up uh, on JiceJohnson.com. You can go ahead and get something scheduled in right there. Or if you're on my social media, you can DM me and I'll make sure that I get in touch with you. Um, I hope again that this was helpful and um, I am looking forward to seeing you all next Wednesday, same time, noon Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I will see y'all next Wednesday.